What is going on everybody, Weedle Tweedle here, and we are back again with another Sun and Moon Wi-Fi battle, and this one's gonna be against Adrian, a person I battle off my Discord server, so if you guys are interested in a Sun and Moon battle, enjoy Discord chat room and a place to hang out and find Wi-Fi battles and meet new people in chat, definitely check out my Discord server, I'll link this in the description. Now me and Adrian are having an underused battle today, as this battle is relatively long, so we're just gonna head right into this battle. I'll use some Pokemon you guys want to see me use, like Wigglytuff, Typhlosion, Krikatoon, Gogo, Crawdon, and I'm using Saviper for some fun, as my opponent has Entei, Suicune, and Celebi, but not Raikou. Like, how could you not complete that, like, Johto squad like that? Like, come on, like, at least replace the Celebi for Raikou. Like, how could you not put the three dogs together? If you're gonna use two, you may as well just use three. I don't know. I mean, I know that's not the best team, you know, team synergy in the world, but like, come on now. Anyway, I expect the, um, and take the lead off, expect my Krikatoon, but Hippowdon works too, is so my opponent is gonna, you know, think that Celebi is a Crawdon switch, and even though I could have clicked Knockoff, not too sure what my opponent was thinking there, but Knockoff, or Cradhammer is gonna almost, you know, one shot it. Thanks to that critical hit that I deserve because we punished bad plays like that. And now my opponent is going to want to go for the Giga Drain or Leaf Storm. So I'm going to choose to bring in my Carl because I figured I could pivot into a Grass type attack. As my opponent is going to go for the Z move, I'm like, oh god, what move is this? So Salabi's going to look very evil with its eyes, jeez. And uh, now I'm going to get my Sap Zipper to absorb the Bloom Doom. I'm assuming. So, um,. Yeah, my opponent kind of just got shot on there in every way, <laughs> unfortunate for him, but um, I, I, mean, I didn't even anticipate the Leaf Storm, I'm just like, I'm gonna switch into freaking Leech so you can get Saps of her, but the, I mean, the Z move, no, that's a lie. Now here, my opponent goes for Hidden Power Fire and activates my Weakness Policy, so for that one guy that won't stop begging for me to use Weakness Policy Go-Goat, here you go. Now I'm gonna go for the bulk up here with my Go-Goat and get plus one in my attack and defense after Sap Cipher and Weakness Policy, so now I'm at plus four attack and plus one defense and plus two special attack, like that really matters. And I'm looking pretty damn threatening. I'm pretty much, like the Sully pretty much gave me like a Go-Goat sweep on a silver platter because not only did it activate my Weakness Policy with like the weakest in Power Fire possible, um, it, it gave me a Sap Cipher boost as well with the Z move. So. I'm just going to choose to milk drink here because even though that I have this go go sweep on a silver platter, my opponent does have Entei and Entei hits relatively hard so I'm just trying to set up as many bulk ups as possible in hopes that I can live any Entei attack and retaliate from there. But um, my opponent's in power fires are still chipping me down a lot and it's kind of obnoxious. But I mean they're not doing that much damage but they're doing enough to the point where Entei can easily knock me out after I beat the Celebi so I'm just trying to set up accordingly so I don't like lose all of my go go's hard work immediately i'm trying to get this thing a few kills you know what i'm saying so even though it's kind of like playing stally i'm just trying to set up for this gogo -go to do some work you know what i'm saying so so i'm just gonna go for hidden power fire not do much to my gogo -go. as now i'm just gonna choose to go for the milk drink and get all of my health back that's very nice for me and my gogo -go is pretty much back to full health and the celebi the celebi is gonna choose to go for nasty plot now i don't know why my opponent just didn't click nasty plot any of the other turns but now my opponent's like nasty plots now and now I'm like, a plus two defense, I should be able to tank um, any attack Entei has to throw at me, so I'm going to go for Horn Leech here, as I should be able to live enough with, you know, the lefties plus the Horn Leech recovery from the Celebi, as um, my opponent actually clicks Nasty Plot, so that was a bit of a misplay on my opponent's part. Um, if he clicked Nasty Plot any other turns, that would have worked very well for him, but I don't know what he was thinking there. But anyway, in comes the Entei, this is what I was afraid of, really. And I know that Flare Blitz or Sacred Fire can just one-shot me, so I'm pretty much just leaving my Gogo in here. Though I do have a Typhlosion on Flash Fire, I want to see if Gogo can take the heat. And Gogo can take the heat, but unfortunately it gets burned by Sacred Fire. I want to say unfortunate, but it's a 50% chance. A 50%, that's a pretty high numbers for Entei, I can see why it's pretty high in the UU tier. So Earthquake's gonna almost, you know, I would have killed it if I didn't get burned, but... I was at plus 5 attack, that's a lot of attack and it still didn't kill. I mean, I have no attack investment in the grand, but still. Anyway, I'm going to bring in my Krakatoa, because I realized from the anti-damage that's probably choice banded, so I know it's locked into Sacred Fire. So my opponent is going to pivot into the Sweet in here, expecting the uh, fire type attack, I'm assuming, because, you know, I have no reason not to do it. And I'm actually just going to choose to go for my Z move here, as I'm going to put my hand out with Shaniqua, and we're going to set up the Sun with Krakatoa because even though I love to bluff Choice Scarf with Typhlosion, it's actually a Z Sunny Day set with Eruption anyway, even though running Eruption with this, like, just by itself is very bad. 
Um, I also have Fire Blast on the set, so I have Solar Beam, Fire Blast, and Eruption. So um, I can just I can just go for Solar Beam here. It's pretty obvious that I have Solar Beam because why would I run Z Sunny Day without Solar Beam? Like that's just not that doesn't make sense. So now I'm gonna click Double Sunny Day, expecting the hit power down to pivot into the Solar Beam. As I do get that play correctly, and now I pretty much get a free hit on whatever he wants to bring in. I mean, I pretty much get a free kill essentially because Eruption in the Sun hits relatively hard. And now I can just click Solar Beam anyway because I anticipated Suicune to switch in, but I guess the Entei comes out instead. Uh, I thought my opponent maybe wouldn't anticipate the uh, Solar Beam, but he does decide to pivot into Entei making the right play. And we're just going to go for Solar Beam anyway just because may as well go for it while we can and show off that I have Solar Beam. So the Suicune's less, you know, less inclined to switch in. So, um, yeah, Solar Beam's going to knock out the Entei. And down that thing goes, as now my opponent is going to bring in Hippowdon, and Hippowdon is just going to reset up the sand, which is a little bit obnoxious because I wanted my Typhlosion to do work, but um, with the sand up, my eruption is heavily weakened. But now my opponent is going to switch out and expecting eruption and bring in the Suicune once again, as I do believe I just click eruption here because I wanted to do as much damage to the Hippowdon as possible, and um, that was a good play in this part. Um, bringing in the Suicune, it's going to still do a quarter of health, so it leads me to believe it has no speed death investment because. Typhlosion isn't the most powerful mod in the world, you know what I'm saying? So, Eruption with the Sand does a decent chunk to Suicune, and I do see Leftover, so I'm pretty much just figuring, you know, it's a Combine, Rest, Sleep, Talk, Scald, Suicune, the basic bitch Suicune set, but my opponent just pulls out some flames here. I'm gonna go for Sunny Day here, expecting the Combine, as I can still chunk the Suicune away with Solar Beams, even at plus one spit off, and go from there, as my opponent actually goes for Substitute, and I'm like, oh, you have Substitute. That's not good. Um, Sub... Leftover Suicune, I'm like, I feel like I've seen this before, but um, then my opponent reveals the Protect, and I'm like, oh, yep, Chimpact. I've seen this on Chimpact's channel before. The sub Protect Suicune, max speed, max HP. Pretty good set. I think it's a better in tournament play, but um, it definitely works well for him, because he can just stall out my son. Um, I'm just going to still try to break that sub anyway. I kind of sped this part up a lot, because it's just Suicune just being a stall god, and I mean not being able to do anything about it, essentially, because... Combine Suicune is really obnoxious, but I'm um, still going to try to just brute force my way through here, but um, I should be able to get a slower beam up here because I'm breaking the sub, and he can't outspeed me, so he's going to go for Protect here just to stall out another turn, understandable, but I'm still going to get a guaranteed solar beam off because he's already protected, so it's not guaranteed he gets the light Protect off, but um, my opponent does go for the double Protect, as unfortunately he gets it, and now solar beam is just going to... You know, hit nope. the double protect, and now my son is gonna fade, so now I can't slurry beam at him, and he gets the freest substitute of his life because he knows that he could tank any hit because um, he has plus one combine. So he's gonna, I'm gonna switch into Cassiopeia here, expecting the substitute, and my opponent does go for sub. Now it may seem weird because, like, why would you bring in Spiker on a Suicune? But I do carry Infiltrator, and I don't think I can kill Suicune because Sludge Bomb from Spiker is pissed for a week, but I do have a final gambit. I also have Switcheroo, but I figured final gambit should be able to knock it out from that range of health as thankfully we're able to deal with the freaking Suicune. Oh my gosh. I know I sacrificed the Viper's life, but still, that's definitely worth it for that noxious Suicune to be dead. Substitute protects Suicune. Like, this guy just really wanted him to be the pinnacle of Wi-Fi battle content. Like, how how entertaining is that to watch? Like, 10 out of 10. Anyway, in comes Hippowdon on my Krakatoa, as I'm just going to choose to go for Sunny Day because my opponent still has late game Stoutland, which is very scary because my team is relatively slow and has doesn't have many bulky Pokemon on it because it's pretty much a bunch of PU Pokemon essentially with Wigglytuff and Krikatoon, but it's okay. I have fun like that. So here my opponent doesn't anticipate my switch, I guess, because he collected Stone Edge, but it still knocks me out. And now I'm going to bring in the Krikatoon, the cry that we all love, and I'm not going to try to do that right now because I'm kind of losing my voice if you guys couldn't tell, so I don't want to attempt to make that noise at the moment. So now my opponent is going to bring in the Manda Buzz, and I'm just going to lay up Sticky Webs and get them up on the field, and um... I don't even know why I clicked Sticky Webs, I should have just clicked Knock Off to be honest with you, but I wanted to show white Sticky Webs and just to slow down the stat one slightly so I cannot speed it potentially, I don't even know. But um, yeah, Foul Play is going to actually do a lot of Krikatoon because I'm Max Attack and this Krikatoon set's actually really fun. Um, I didn't really get to use it in this battle because I kind of used it late game and it's essentially supposed to be his early game, but he had a hip out on so I'm like, there's no point. So here, um, I accidentally switched into Defog, I was anticipating Foul Play again. But I switch into default and get a competitive boost with my Wiggly Tough. Another accidental play that actually worked out for me, like the Go Go. So I actually planned that accordingly, and now I have competitive with a Life Orb because this is an offensive Stealth Rock Wiggly Tough. I should have probably laid up Stealth Rocks here, but I was, wasn't really thinking 
Um, I thought he would just stay in and I don't know, but I'm gonna go for Hyper Voice. Then comes Hippo, and Hyper Voice still is gonna 2 a KO this Hippo in a plus 2 because I'm Life Orb, and even if this thing is Bedef invested, um, Wigglytuff hits pretty hard with Life Orb plus 2. I mean, I think anything hits hard at Life Orb plus 2, but like, come on, it's Wigglytuff. They got a competitive boost, so it deserves this kill. Hyper Voice with Dot Squad, and it's just gonna knock out the Hippo. So down goes that Hippo, and now um, all my opponent has left is the um, Mandibuzz and the Stoutland. But um, the Stoutland is still very threatening, and Stoutland could just win him the game essentially because Stoutland is relatively fast. And if I don't play around it accordingly, I could potentially lose. But I still have a good chance of winning this game because Crawdon in the back is pretty damn powerful. So frustration, Wigglytuff should be able to love it, but um, I forgot that Wigglytuff is really weak. So, and the Stoutland ends up being life form, not too surprising. But as long as I get still all the sand, it should be good. But this is where I remember the uh, defog. Um, got rid of my sticky web so the stout one's speed is actually not decreased, but it doesn't really matter. I'm going to pivot into my um, Cricket Junior expecting the superpower or the double switch as I actually do get that play correctly and um, I'm able to pivot into the superpower. <clears throat> Good thing I scouted for it because I figured that, I mean like, what does stout one have to hit me? I'm like, I won't die to frustration, but I will die to like a super effective hit. And I just kind of like looked it up on CRB real quick, but it does get superpower. Actually, smoke on. Smog on the superior website because actually tells you tells you like the competitive set people like to run. It's nice for scouting stuff. Anyway, in comes Mandibuzz, and um, I kind of missed. But here going for Aqua Jet. I figured my opponent would stay in because Super Power would still knock me out, and then he could just beat me with Mandibuzz one v one. But he switches out, and it was kind of a 50-50, because if I clicked Sword stands there, I would have easily just destroyed this Mandibuzz, and Kyperion would have killed it. But it lifts the sliver of health because Mandibuzz is such a defensive monster in foul play. Is going to do a pretty big chunk to Crawdon because Crawdon's attack set is pretty high. And if I clicked Swords and it's on that turn, I'm sure it would have died to foul play, so that was not my best play. And I'm not going to go for Aqua Jet just to knock out Command the Buzz. And my opponent's last is Stoutland, and since the sand is gone, it is slower, but since Crawdon is a slow piece of trash, it's still going to get outsped by the Stoutland, so Stoutland is going to come in here. And I'm just going to go for the uh, Aqua Jet as a last ditch effort because I know it's just going to outspeed me. And we're almost able to knock him out, but even though I'm adamant with life orb, just Stoutland has too much base defense to love that. And Super Powered is going to knock me out, and we're going to lose 0-1 to the Stoutland, but it was still a very fun battle. And good game, Adrian. He played very well, and I could have won with the Crawdon late game. I just kind of misplayed it. I didn't really think about late game. I just kind of got too excited with my other Pokemon. But, I mean, it's okay. I admit, I make mistakes. Anyway, I hope you guys did enjoy that Wi-Fi battle. If you guys did enjoy this battle and want to support my YouTube channel, please be sure to corkscrew crash that like button as it means the world to me and your guys' support has been outstanding lately and it keeps me inspired to make daily uploads and I do apologize for the lack of daily uploads. I've just been addicted to Breath of the Wild to be honest with you and I just haven't been feeling Pokemon lately but I'm sure they will return very soon as I've been finding a lot of battles lately so yeah anyway the question of the day is going to be what is your favorite legendary Pokemon throughout the entire series? Let me know in the comments down below. Now my favorite legendary Pokemon has got to be either Azelf or Articuno. Um, I like them both a lot. I just have like this odd like attraction towards Azelf that I can't quite explain honestly. Um, I've liked it since Gen 4 and I've just loved the design and just the design of the Pixies in general but Azelf especially I just really like it. And Articuno has just been my favorite legendary since freaking Pokemon Stadium. But yeah, thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll check you guys in my next video. Alright, peace.